Good morning. Give you a very warm welcome to Lakeside. Will you all stand with us? I'm going to lead you in a couple of songs at the beginning. Join with us. Sing with us. We're going to. Your love never fails.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, there's so many things, aren't there, that just grip us and hold us back in our lives, and fear is, is one of those. I remember someone once saying that it's false expectations appearing real, and if you've ever struggled with fear or you've ever had fear come upon you, you'll know how true that can be. And we're going to pray for a few people, but before we do that, we want to give thanks to God because uh, I've got a couple of praise reports here, and I just want you to go really really wild and just ecstatic when I share some of these things and one of them really fits in with what we've just been saying there because uh, Sue, Sue Wright is not here with us this morning but Sue's been having some tests recently and uh, I'm not going to go into all the details as to what she was being tested for but I know that Fee when she first told uh, when she was first told what, what what it might be that a real sense of fear it would have been so easy for that to come upon her, but she's had the test this week. We've been praying and they've come back all clear and we want to thank God for that. That means so much to her. We really, I know Charlotte's here and Charlotte knows that and we really do thank God for that. And uh, you know what, we've seen a number of people make decisions for Jesus over the past few weeks and there's no greatest thing, is there? That we get set free from the fear that can hold us hold us back and uh, David and Esther Dave had a call this week um, just from someone just if he could go out and visit someone and he went on a, a Thursday I think it was Thursday Friday of this week they went to visit this lovely lady and uh, she's filled in a praise report card she says I want to celebrate becoming a Christian and I am so excited with the start of my new life just hold your applause for a moment for that because we rejoice you know the Bible says that when one person one sinner repents the whole of heaven rejoices and we know there's partying in heaven right now because of this but yesterday we were out on the streets the Love Southport team we were out and a young man we got chatting with him and he gave his life to Jesus yesterday as well so church come on let's let's thank that that God is moving in people's lives no greater thing is there that we can celebrate than people finding new life in Jesus come on church wake up there's no greater thing that we can celebrate than people finding new life in Jesus but you know just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you go through life hassle free or trouble free Jesus says in this world you will face trouble how many of you know what I'm talking about and we do there's so many times when we find ourselves going through difficulties and trials and sickness is one of those things and I've got a number of these I'm just going to whiz through these just ask us to remember Paul Ross in our prayers Blair just ongoing with his heart condition it's great to see Suzanne here with us we've been praying for Suzanne with her foot but let's thank God that she's here uh, Jackie Clark still in hospital if we can pray for Sally Sally Mott Sally was taken into hospital on Friday she's back home now but she's got an infected left lung and um, we've just had some other uh, uh, requests as well for people that are known to people within the fellowship a friend of Suzanne's her friend's dad Bobby's had a massive stroke yesterday let's just pray for him a friend of Dave and Esther playing rugby a 16 year old boy and he's had a bleed on the brain um, on Thursday he has a scan so let's pray that blood disperses safely a friend of John Marshall's uh, eye writers and glaucoma macular degeneration um, a friend of Richard Bibby, Brian has a cracked vertebrae, in great pain. And a friend of Dawn Smith, one of the pastors at the church in Newton, the Willows there, has just lost his sister, so obviously they're grieving. You know, like we've celebrated what God's done in some people's life. But we want to pray that God would just come and minister to these people. So church, and just in these moments, can we lift our voices together? just with one voice of one accord and just bring these needs. Maybe you're here this morning, you haven't filled out a prayer request card, that's fine. God knows the situation that you're, uh, that you're facing right now, but let's just bring them up before you. If that's a touch of healing that you need, let's believe in these moments. We know that God is here. He inhabits the praises of his people. We've been singing to him this morning. We know that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. And although we can't see him physically, as we look through eyes of faith, we can see him and we can know and experience his touch in our lives. And so, come on, let's just lift our voices. Father, we bring all these needs before you, Lord. We thank you that we can celebrate with Jane. We can 
celebrate with this man Steve for finding new life in you. We celebrate with Sue for these great reports, Lord, that she's had, these results from these tests. And yet, Lord, as we celebrate with these, Lord, we, Father, we recognize there's others who need a real touch from you. And we just bring them before you in these moments. Lord, we ask that in your grace and in your mercy that you would touch them, you would reach from heaven, God, that you would minister to them. We know that just one touch, just one word from you can change everything. In an instant, that situation, that problem, that illness, that sickness can disappear. And Lord, we're believing, we come, Father, with expectant faith this morning in the one who is greater. We've been singing that, that our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. You are our healer, awesome in power. And we would ask that you would release that this morning amongst us and upon us and within us. And for those who can't be here, maybe those who are watching online, that Father, you might just minister to them in their moment of need right now, we pray. And Father, we promise to give you all the praise and all the glory because it's yours and it's yours alone. And all God's people said together, Amen. Amen. Let's just applaud the Lord, shall we, for what he's doing, for what we believe he's going to do. He's a good God, and it doesn't matter in one sense how long that, that, that affliction might be with you. Just keep pressing and keep believing, keep trusting that that breakthrough is going to come. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one more song together as we do this. The team are going to lead us and we're just going to wait upon you for our tithes and our offerings, just part of our worship before God. If you're a guest here today, maybe it's your first time, you've been invited by someone, feel free to let the containers go before you. If you want to give, that's absolutely fine. But this is all part of our worship. We believe in the biblical tithe. We believe that everything we have is because God has first given it to us. And the scriptures talk about giving a portion of that back to him just as, a, as recognition of our thankfulness, but our trust in his provision over our lives. And uh, I think we've, there might be a screen that just tells you the different ways that you can give, either through check or, or, or through text on, online. I don't, I've just got that up on there. I'll be on for a moment and the band are going to lead us in this other song but this is all part of our worship let's just continue to to give Jesus thanks as we do this
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you that we can know and experience a love that never runs out on us, Lord. It's a love that we can never be separated from. It doesn't matter who we are or what we've done or where we've been. It's a love that can never, ever be separated from us. And we want to give you all the thanks and all the praise because you've made that possible for us through Jesus, our Saviour and our Lord. If you know that love, just give God a just thanks for that this morning. <laughs> While you're doing it, just show a bit of appreciation to the band for leading us so well. Why don't you turn around and greet someone? We love to make people feel welcome here. You've got a minute just to mingle. 60 seconds, that's all you've got. Okay, if you just want to be looking to take your seats, that would be really good. Really is great to see you this morning. Can I give you a really warm welcome to Lakeside? If it's maybe your first time here, you're here as a guest, we really do want to give you a really warm welcome. I hope as you came in, you were greeted by one of the team. They may have handed you, hopefully they've handed you one of our welcome brochures, tells you a little bit more about who we are. And uh, within that, there should be a little blue card that we'd love you to fill in, uh, just by uh, way of letting us know that you're, you're here, because we'd love to write out and just say thank you for coming. And in response to that, we'd love to give you one of our lakeside pens. You're so predictable. But we'd love to give you one of them just by way of saying thanks. You can never have enough pens in your pocket or your purse, can you? So uh, fill that in, hand it to one of us, and we'd love to uh, give, that, give that to you. Just write out and uh, say thanks to you. I've got a few notices that I just want to run through. If we can just bring them up for us, Chloe, that would be great. First of all, to say that tonight, uh, Alpha is into week six. It's going really well, both the Sunday evening one and also the daytime one. Got 20 plus people that are coming to each of those and uh, they're combined. So we really do thank God for that. Unless you're involved in Alpha, you've got another night off this Sunday. Don't look pleased. You see, the pen gets more, gets more of a cheer than, than the fact that there's nothing else on. Like, you just want to be in church, don't you? You just. Three of you do over here anyway. So, so that's, uh, that's taking place this evening. Uh, and then Tuesdays, don't forget, we're having some phenomenal times together just for the one hour on a Tuesday night, 8 o'clock till 9. And uh, really encourage you, if you can make it just for that one hour, just come along and be with us. They're, they're, they've been so encouraging. And we believe that we've seen things happen as a result of our, of our praying. We really believe that. And so we want to encourage you to come along with us for that. Little reminder that in two weeks, two weeks' time, two weeks uh, yesterday evening, we've got our next bonfire event. So thank you to Simon and all the team who are helping out. It's going to be a great night, five o'clock till seven o'clock. We've got a brilliant firework display that uh, is all prepared. There's the bonfire. There's all those other things that you can read on the screen. Uh, but we'd love you to get involved. Simon, I'm sure, will not turn anyone else away if they haven't yet said that they're free to come and help for a little bit, maybe an hour or just throughout the whole two hours, please have a chat with Simon and uh, he can give you 
all the details in relation to that. Just a couple of other things that I haven't got a, uh, oh, well, I have got a graphic for this one. First of all, the seniors Christmas meal, just to let you know that that's happening on Tuesday the 3rd of December. There are letters available in reception for you to pick up one of those. All the details are on there and get them back, hand them back to John Sweeney so we can get you booked in and get your meal ordered for that. So that's going to be a great time of uh, celebrating. Yes, you're going to hear more about Christmas coming over the next few weeks. Anyone happy about Christmas? Yes. <laughs> Tell your faces, will you? <laughs> and then just a couple of uh, other things. Limitless. That's the name of Elim's National Youth Ministry. Um, it's also the name of uh, the youth ministry within our church here. We adopted that. We just want to let you know that we have appointed someone to pick up the, the reins from Craig now, and uh, who's going to be joining us as our new youth pastor. We had a couple of great interviews. It was really difficult for us, but uh, uh, we're pleased to announce that a guy called Paul Barrett, Paul's currently uh, working at Bootle Elim Church. He's the youth pastor there. He's a secondary school teacher. Uh, so Paul's going to be joining us in January 2020, uh, picking up that role there. So please pray for Paul, just as he prepares. Pray for us, as, uh, 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 and for Matt particularly, as he continues to oversee uh, the youth work here just in this interim period. But we're really pleased. It's been a long process in terms of doing that, but we're really excited about all that's going to happen in the days to come. So thank you for your ongoing prayers in relation to that. Got a couple of other things that we want to do this morning before we get Pastor Dave up to come and bring us around God's Word. First of all, we want to invite Gary up. Wait, where's Gary? Gary, come and join me. Give Gary a, a little ripple of, a, of applause. Come and join me. And also, Richard, where's, where's Richard? Richard, just give Richard a little bit of encouragement as well. Gary will be familiar to, to all of you here, I'm sure, this morning. You might not know Richard so well. Richard is the chief executive of Compassion Acts, which is the ministry that encompasses the food bank and uh, community money advice and the welfare benefits and the food pantry and cap. <laughs> <laughs> the answer's here, isn't it? <laughs> Just making sure that you are all aware of what goes on. So Richard's been in situ now for a number of months, just in terms of that role. But some of you may be aware that, uh, I think it was 13 years ago, was it, Gary, that, that CAP was first established. It was running out of Shoreline Church for, for 10 years. And so Gary was very much the driving force behind that. And uh, then the situation changed a few years ago in as much as it just... Uh, um, a whole number of churches across the town, I think there were about 15 to 20 of us, wanted to, to continue with CAP. It wasn't possible for Shoreline to keep running it in the current format that they were doing it. And so a whole number of us recognised the importance of uh, um, CAP within the town. And so as, as, as church leaders, we said that we need this ministry to continue. And so plans were put into place. I won't bore you with all the details, but it just enabled us to keep CAP running and for Gary to keep doing the amazing work that he's been doing. And so for the past three years, it's been running in, in that kind of format. But there's been things taking place in uh, Gary's life over the past year or so, just felt the, the water stirring. And uh, you know when that happens, that you just have to be obedient to it. And so Gary, just tell us what you began doing and where it's led you to. Um, okay, so uh, all I can think of is, is Moses. Moses was given a challenge, a dare. And sometimes I've found that the blessings are normally on the other side of dare. And God dared me to step out and to, to challenge myself and my comfortability. I was very comfortable in CAP for many years. I could do it blindfolded. But God was daring me, which is appropriate for this, this message, really. Uh, so he, he told me to step out and, and trust him. And like I said, and, and to be blessed on the other side of dare. So I did. And about 18 months ago, I, I stepped out and started uh, opening a few doors uh, and God kept the doors opened uh, and this is where I find myself now out of a comfortable position out of the boat on choppy waters but still going to help vulnerable people still going to help people who are desperately in need uh, so so it's a challenge and as Moses when he was given that task to lead the people that's how I feel in some way that the task before me is great and big and mighty but my God is stronger my God is a lot mightier yeah. 
So you might not know exactly what he's stepping out into, but um, just tell them what you're becoming. Okay, okay. So or what uh, you've become. <laughs> what I've become. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the right phraseology, but all, all will become clear. So, so, so God's, I'm, I'm going into the police service as a policeman. Which, yeah, I know, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, so I've done the specials for a few months now, but again, that was comfortable. But God was still pressing the button saying, no, that's not what I asked for. I want you to step further. So, yeah, so again, it's going into the police service. And again, it's, it's a challenge, and, but it's one life at a time, isn't it? It's making a difference one life at a, at a time. Mm. And it's taking God with me into those, uh, those lives, those damaged lives, and bringing God into those situations. Brilliant. Brilliant. And so, yeah, it's, it's, a big, it's a big change for him. Uh, it's not easy going into the police force. I know Danny um, is a policeman. He's not here with us. He's on duty. And so there's all the shifts and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, but uh, we really want to honour you, Gary. And uh, I know as chair of the, the trust of, of, of Compassion Acts, and then Rich will say a couple of words as well. But there's a, a gift from us there for you, just want to uh, honour you and recognise the, the most amazing work that you have done. I think only heaven will reveal the number of lives that have truly been touched in the 13 years that you've been doing this role and we really do want to say thank you. We're going to pray for you in a moment as well as you step into this new role as well but I thought it was only right that we got you up and we just honoured you where uh, honour was due today as well so we really do bless you, bless you for that. Bless you mate. I want to give thanks to God for the work that Gary has done, but also the people he's, he's um, enlivened in the town, because we don't give up on people, do we? We don't give up on people because their situation is bad. We say, we know a good God, and we know that Jesus walks with you if you allow us to introduce him to you. And in the Christians Against Poverty, I haven't known Gary for that long, because I only started in May, but he's impressed me with his walk with the Lord, with his uh, humility, actually, mm -hmm. because he's been on this job for a long time, he could tell all of us everything we ever needed to know about finance and about how Christians Against Poverty runs. And it's a quite a complex organization, and I'm getting my head around it, um, but you can tell us it all. So your humility, your wise counsel, your judgment, we thank God for that, and we wish you well in the future. On a personal level, your beautiful family, and, um, you know, Compassion Acts continues to provide these services through Christians Against Poverty, through Community Money Advice, Food Bank, Food Pantry, uh, Welfare Benefits Advice. Um, and we have lots of literature in the front. So please do take it and in the, ca in the coffee house as well. But I think if we can pray for you, Gary, yeah, as we go forward. Right. Come on, mate. Just reach out your hands towards him if you're, if you're comfortable with that. Father, we want to say thank you so much for Gary. Thank you, first and foremost, Lord, for who he is, for the person that he is, Lord, for... Uh, his love for you and his love for other people. Lord, it's no surprise to us that, that CAP has been so successful over the past 13 years because of the person who's been heading it up and the person who's been moving it forward and, and, and contacting other people. And Lord, we just thank you for him. Thank you for the gifts that you've placed within him. But Lord, we thank you for this new season that he's stepping into. And Lord, we're asking that uh, just as he's seen you prove yourself faithful time and time again, over the past 13 years in that role, that, Lord, he's going to see you prove yourself faithful time and time again in this new season that he's coming into, in this new role. Father, we pray, God, that he would never lose that, that compassionate heart within him and that, Father, you'd give him wisdom and strength and courage and, and wisdom for every situation that he finds himself in in these days ahead and that through his life, through his ministry, through this new role, that, Father, he would... Uh, just be a tool in your hand that you would use him to continue to bless and to reach out to others. And so Holy Spirit, come and fill him afresh and give him that courage and everything that he needs in these days ahead. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give Gary a big round of applause and let's give a job. I just want to say publicly thank you, uh, obviously to God, to my lovely wife Rose, but and also to the church with with Richard and Richard, uh, but also with the, the local church. We've got a great team of leaders in our community who all came together and all thought about the the, the one. 
all thought about reaching souls and reaching lives. So thank you again to the church here, to Richard, and all that they did. Bless you. Bless you, mate. Thanks, Gary. I wonder if you can just bring up the, uh, the other set of slides for us at all. We've got something really exciting, really special for one family in particular this morning that we're just going to spend these next few minutes dedicating little baby Sarah. And it's a, it's a gorgeous picture of her, isn't it? Sarah and Hope Payton. This is one of the joys of uh, pastoral ministry that you get to dedicate the babies when, when they're born. And um, many of you may have been here before when we've, when we've had a dedication ceremony, but you might be wondering what, what it is. What is dedication? We don't, we don't baptize, we don't christen. Uh, uh, babies, we believe that the, uh, the scriptures teach us just in terms of dedication that when a person uh, comes to a, a certain age and, and, and level of understanding that they can make that personal decision to invite Jesus to become their Lord and Savior and on the back of that then they'll go through the waters of baptism but uh, we, we do dedicate children and it's very simply an opportunity to say thank you to God for the safe arrival of a child it's a time for the parents of fresh and also for the church to, to make a commitment to God and for, to ask for his help in bringing up that child. If you've got children, you know exactly, or if you've had children, you know exactly how difficult that is. They're a great joy, aren't they? Yes. Well, this section seems to think so. You've obviously had some bad parenting experiences, but they're an incredible joy. But how many of you know they're hard work? Yes. A few more of you are saying yes and amen to that bit. They're hard work. Let's be honest and so we need help and it's not just down to the parents and the immediate family to bring up that child but one of the beauties of belonging to a church body a church family is that they can help us as well we've got kids workers we've got youth workers we've got other people babysitters <laughs> etc within the church who all together culminate together collaborate together and, and help bring up the, the children and, you know, family is a God's idea. Right back at, at the beginning of time from creation as we know it, God gave that commandment to, to Adam and Eve. He said, be fruitful and increase in number. In other words, have a family, have kids. Uh, they're the basic building blocks of society. They're, they're crucial to the health of the nation. And they're so central to the life of the church. And I love that we're a family church, that we've got people of all ages here and we're still producing babies as well and I thank God for that so be careful what's in your tea afterwards okay because uh, you just don't know but it's a great opportunity to uh, dedicate baby Sarah this morning so I'm gonna invite Matt and Maria to come and join me and, and Eli as well you know Jesus loves children there was that story wasn't there where Jesus wherever he went he was surrounded by people and the and crowds of people would gather around him and, and oftentimes the, the children would come and just find their way through and the disciples got a little bit indignant by this and they said, Jesus, send them away. But Jesus turned around and it just showed his heart. He said, let the little children come to me. Don't hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. We know that we need a childlike faith, not a childish faith. How many of you know there's a difference? We want to get rid of the childish ways, but, but we need a childlike stuff a childlike faith and so it's great that we can we can do this and just in the same way that Jesus took the children in his arms put his hands on them and blessed them that's what we're going to do for baby Sarah in just in a few moments but to Matt and Maria I got a couple of questions Eli doesn't want to play ball this morning <laughs> that's okay that's okay but Matt and, and Maria just a couple of questions you know this, we've been through this before already with, with, with Eli, but do you recognize that you've received Sarah and Hope as a gift from God? Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> Just to help them, we put the answers up there for them as well. <laughs> Just in case. And in presenting Sarah and Hope to the Lord, do you now promise that as far as you're able, you'll by your example bring her up in the training and instruction of the Lord and in the Christian faith? We do. We do. Fantastic. Church, there's a, a charge to you as well. As I said before, it's not just their responsibility, but we all have the privilege in, in being a part of this. And I'll put this charge to, to you here, Lakeside Church. Do you as members of this church acknowledge and accept the responsibility together with Matt and Maria uh, for training Sarah so that she may be led in due time to trust Christ as her saviour if 
the answer is yes to that. Would you signify that by standing with us? And I always say it, Matt and Maria, have a look around because they're saying that. This means that they're offering to babysit whenever (laughs) you want to have a night out, you want to have a date night, just take a quick snapshot of all the of all the people here. That's in the small print that you can't see that you promise to babysit whenever you get asked. But I'm gonna see if I can take her now. She's fast asleep and I'm gonna do my absolute utmost not to disturb her. And I've failed miserably. But we're gonna pray for for Saren. Such a beautiful name, isn't it? We're going to pray for her. We're going to pray for Matt and Maria. And again, if you're comfortable with it, would you reach out your hands towards them? Let's just pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we want to say we believe that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And Lord, we're, we're reminded of that right now as we just consider baby Saren here before us, Lord, that she is the most perfect gift. She's been created so uniquely and intricately, delicately. She was fashioned and formed in Maria's womb. And Lord, we thank you that even before she was conceived in Maria's womb, she was conceived in your heart and in your mind. Lord, that before she was formed, you knew her. You set her apart. You got plans and purposes for her and we believe those plans are great and awesome and mighty and uh, Lord I know it's Matt and Maria's heart that she would grow up to do the most amazing exploits for you that she would grow up to know you but uh, Lord we're asking today that you would just fill her with your Holy Spirit even at such a young age in such a tiny frame that she might begin to know you and as she gets brought up through their, their teaching and through the teaching of the, of the church and she's led to read the scriptures herself when she's of that age that Father, she would make that decision early in her life that she wants to be a follower of Jesus. And Father, we're asking that your hand would continue to be upon her, that you would continue to bless her and guide her and lead her into all good things, every good thing that you have for her. Father, we pray that her days would be full and plentiful and many and that through her life, Father, she would, she would be such a, a great witness for you, Father. We thank you that even now, Lord, the, the, the gifts are, are within her, Lord, that she's going to grow into and discover as she grows up in these days to come. And so we're saying to you, Saren, today, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you, lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his favour and his peace throughout all the days of your life. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, we pray for Matt and Maria and for Eli and for all the family. We thank you for them. Thank you, Lord, for such a great godly couple. Thank you for the example that they will bring to both the children they have now and all those that may yet to come. Father, we're asking that you would continue to provide for them in every way. Lord, that just like the psalmist said, is with you being their shepherd, they shall not be in want, but they shall know the peace and the provision and uh, every good thing that you have for them. And Lord, we, we just want to say thank you for them, for the great leadership they bring and for the great example they are to us as well. And we ask for your blessing upon them all and this wonderful family. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh, man. Now, I'm just going to see if I can. She's got the most gorgeous dress on. Just get a photo there. I'll just let it for Lou. I'll just get Lou to take one. She's just sorting out. Oh, I'll sort of dress out. Thanks, Mom. There we go. Look at that. I'll be over social media this afternoon.
Why don't we give them a big round of applause? We've got a... Got a little dedication, a certificate there. But uh, we really do bless you guys. We love you guys. And uh, thank you for the amazing privilege of being able to do this. And uh, I'm going to hand it back to you. There you go, Maria. Let's give them another round of applause, shall we? Amazing family. We're going to let the young people go to their program. If anyone else is involved in the kids' work, we invite you to go and join with them now. Why don't we just pray as Pastor Dave gets ready to come and bring us around God's word this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is truth, that your word is life, that it is the, the final authority on all matters of faith and conduct for us. And Lord, we love your word and we ask that as we hear your word now that, Father, you would give us ears to hear what you have to say. And more than that, Lord, you give us the ability and the courage to apply it to our lives. Lord, we know that it's through our obedience that the blessing comes. And so we ask that you'd fill Dave afresh and just help him now as he ministers to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome Pastor Dave. I'm still learning, sorry. It's great to have you here. Um, it's lovely to see so many smiling faces. Um, I just want to also say it's a real privilege this morning um, to have my niece, Alex, and her husband, um, Toby, with us. Um, and we're very blessed for her to be here. So anybody that Esther hasn't already in introduced to her, I'm sure she will do it with great pride um, after church. This morning, we're going to look at the third part of our series, I Dare To. Um, and I just, want to, um, I just want to say to you all that uh, we've heard two amazing messages so far, real challenging messages. Um, the first one was from Pastor Richard, and, and it was um, to, to choose faith over fear. And it's so important with what we're going to be talking about today that we, that we focus our faith um, over our fears. Um, the second message was, was last week, and I'm sure you'll agree again, um, we were stretched uh, by, by Pastor Matt, and he really spoke to a lot of our hearts about being bigger, being bolder, and being braver. And again, it speaks so much for what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to try to use the clicker today, which is a big step forward for me. Um, <laughs> technology and I are not really... We just don't go together. I'm sorry. Um, I'm really sorry. Um, but uh, Pastor Matt sat and coached me gently over the, the, the last few days on how to put a PowerPoint together. So not only am I praying that the clicker and I get on very well, but I'm praying that my PowerPoint uh, makes sense and works. Um, so today, we're go I'm, I'm going to dare you to go. I'm going to dare you to go, and I just want to say right from the start, when we were talking about this series, I wanted this one so badly, um, because with my, my heart of missionary and, and, and my heart of missions and all those things, I just says, oh, I want to talk about daring to go. But I want to say to you right from the start that I'm not standing up here saying, oh, look at me, I went, or Esther and I went to Cambodia, or we did this, or we did that, forget that. It wasn't about that at all. I, the, when I talk today, I talk to you from a person who, before God called us to go to the mission field, was terrified to go and speak to my family, terrified to go and speak to my friends. And I want to just encourage you this morning that I'm not standing up here wanting to speak about it because we've done anything special, because we haven't. I just want to encourage you that each and every one of us, right from the start, 
is on the same level playing field. I want to read very quickly just a few verses. I uh, can't talk about going without talking about the Great Commission. So I'm going to just start off this morning by reading a few verses from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of age. The Great Commission, telling us to go into the world and make disciples. It's not just for those people who, who um, feel a call in their lives to go across the world to different countries, but it's actually for every single one of us as Christians. Every person in this room, that is a calling a command upon your life. It's not for this person or that person or just somebody who feels, it's for us all. And we can't get away from that. There's no shirking that responsibility. As Christians, we must go into all the world. Um, Charles Swindle, somebody who I love reading his books and different things, said this, whatever we do, we must not treat the Great Commission like it's the Great Suggestion. And it's true, it's not a suggestion, it's a command. It's something that God is telling us as Christians, this is what I expect for you. It's our part of the deal. Do you know, Jesus did his part. He came, he hung on the cross, he died for our family, our friends, for those that are lost in our neighborhood and our workplaces. He did his part, and then he's handed it over to us and says, we must go and tell them now. It's not fair if we don't do our part. That's as simple as that. It's not fair if we don't do our part. We need to go and we need to speak up and we need to tell people. I, as I say before, um, Esther and I were, had a call in our lives to go to, to Cambodia. We, we, I, I was very much like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to say it. I have, met, I have family members who are not Christians. I'm ashamed to say that I struggled to talk to them, to tell them about Jesus. And, and I always, it was, it was always for me, it's not, it's not up to me to tell. It's not up to me to tell. I can't do it. I don't have the ability to speak to people or to tell people about Jesus. But friends, it can be like, it can be, become part of your lifestyle. It can be something that just becomes your normal. And there's nothing that excites me more than hearing the news. Like um, when Pastor Richard contacted me yesterday, I couldn't be there yesterday. Um, and, and Pastor Richard sent me a text to say that somebody had got saved down the street. And I'm going, that's just absolutely amazing. There's nothing gives me a bigger buzz than hearing about people giving their lives to Jesus. Every single one of us that is a Christian has the ability to do that. Uh, you know, faith without fear, bigger, bolder, braver. When we have those things in our hearts and our minds, when we go with faith that God is with us, when we stand um, in situations with people that aren't saved, but we're feeling bigger, we're feeling bolder, and we're feeling braver, it just becomes so much easier. But I felt that this morning that it would be much better if we, if we looked at, I believe, an example that God gave us. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna read a few verses, and it is a few verses. And um, it's a story that I love, and we could preach many, many different sermons on. But I just want to look this morning at how I believe Jesus shows us or gives us an example of how we can go to those that we love. It's in John chapter 4, verses 1 to 42. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and, making and baptizing more disciples than John, 
although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples. He left Judea and departed again for Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town um, of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was, as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you, you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on, on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You, will, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and it is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father, in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back. They, mar they marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, what do, you, wh what do you seek or why are you talking with her? So the women left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat, I have food to eat um, that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say... There are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you do not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me that I, uh, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed th there three, two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. Um, a big reading, but I really felt that we needed to, to read the whole passage this morning. I just want to think very quickly about three things that we can learn from this story um, about the way that Jesus um, 
spoke to this lady and, and, and about just what he was doing because Jesus, in everything that Jesus did, he was doing it, um, I believe, to, to train the disciples up and to teach them how to do things and the things that were going to lie ahead. And this, this, was, this is one of those moments where Jesus spoke to somebody he should never have spoke to in the disciples' eyes and probably and very much culturally as well in that day. Um, Jews wouldn't talk to Samaritans. And not only would they not talk to Samaritans, they definitely wouldn't talk to a female Samaritan. And even within the Samaritans, they hardly spoke to the women. And on top of that, this woman had a background that we're not too sure about, but, but like many of us here, um, had probably had issues in her life that would have made um, her possibly not that popular in her community. The fact that she came out to the well um, at the time that she came out at also showed that she didn't really mix with the other people from the village because normally the ladies would come out in the morning, in the early hours, because the water bottles that they carried were very heavy. So they brought them back in the cool of the morning rather than at lunchtime or midday. So this lady obviously was somebody who people didn't really spend time with. And Jesus showed that he was a pioneer in this moment. Someone who would go somewhere and do something, starting new things or a new trend that other people wouldn't do. And sometimes, um, when, when we have situations in our lives, we think that we can't go and speak to this person or speak to this community or speak to those people because that's not what's been done before. But sometimes we have to break those cultures. Sometimes we have to speak into situations. We have to go to people who the rest of the world um, shuns and pushes aside and doesn't want to, to do anything with because they're, they're scared to speak to them. But actually, those people were exactly the same as you and me. Jesus died on the cross for every single person. It doesn't matter who they are or what they are. They're all the same in Jesus' eyes. And he chose to die on the cross for each and every person. So Jesus here did something which was, was like a pioneer. He went to an area and he showed his disciples that, it was, that, that this was, this was uh, okay to do. It was okay to do something different. Very soon after this, in Acts, we, we read how um, that they, they started to stop tell, just telling the Jews and started to tell the Gentiles. And to be honest with you, I believe, and I may be wrong, and there's people in this room a lot more educated than me, but I'm just going to, a little bit of preacher's license, and I just want to say that I believe that this was an example set by Jesus to those disciples so that they would go into the world and that they would speak to all types of people. And because of that, many of us are sitting here today, Christians, saved because Jesus set this example in this moment. Jesus was present. Jesus was present. He came and he sat on the well. And when the lady came far off with her jug, or, or whatever way she was carrying it, she came along and she seen Jesus sitting there. He was present. He was there. He was waiting for her, and he was available to talk to her. He didn't judge her. He didn't judge her or her lifestyle or anything about her. He was there willing to treat her as a normal human being, to give her the opportunity to start that conversation. And I want to say to you, um, I had a situation... It was about eight years ago. I was asked to speak in a, a, a Christmas time in a RAF. It was called, it was Retired and Free in Bangor, Elam, in our, in our home church. Um, and I'd been asked to speak about Mary. We were, we were home, for, um, we were home for, for on furlough, and, and they said, come along to the Christmas Retired and Free um, time and speak on Mary. And I said, okay, no problem. So I'd put a bit of work in, I'd studied a bit, and I had all these great things I believed to say about Mary. And I was about 10 minutes in, and the Holy Spirit told me to do something which was horrendous. 
it was horrendous. I'm not joking you. I nearly died. And to be honest with you, whenever the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I said, not a chance. And I carried on for a few more minutes and the Holy Spirit prompted me again to say what I needed to say. And I'm going to tell you this morning what I said. But I want you to hear these words yourselves this morning, okay? So, so I want to say the Holy Spirit has not prompted me this morning to say this to you. But if this strikes a chord with you, think about it. The Holy Spirit told me, now remember this room was full of people who I had spent, um, I had spent uh, so much time uh, under these people's ministry. People who had prayed for me from when I was younger. People I totally respected, like totally respected. And God told me, the Holy Spirit told me to step around and that I, if you see me leaning like this on the lectern, you know I'm going to always, the Holy Spirit's prompted me to say something because that's what I do. And I stepped around like this and I said to them, the Holy Spirit has told me to tell you that because of the way that you're treating your children and your family members, you're judging, judging them and you're speaking to them because of the way they're living their lives, they are not going to come back to Jesus. They're not going to come back to God. They're not going to come back to church. And you need to stop judging them and you need to start loving your family again. And I was thinking, oh my word, what have I said? I'm going to get murdered after this. So I carried on. I would just like to point out that I forgot about my PowerPoint. I was getting so excited. So, so I... I as I say, I'm not technical, so I'm going to just quickly catch myself up. Look, did you see the way I came in? And would you see this? Right, okay, so how good was that? You see, now I'm really happy that I did that because I'm fed up with people coming up and saying, oh, pastor, you're wonderful, you're this, you're not. I'm not. I'm just a normal person who makes mistakes. Um, anyway... Do you know what? See, afterwards, I, when I finished um, speaking about Mary, um, I had three, peop three couples came to me in tears. And they said, I, we have been so hard on our family members because they're not walking with Jesus. And because of the things that they're doing, they have co we have completely pushed them further away from God. And we promise we're going to go and we're going to start to love them. And do you know, and this is not a word of a lie, every single one of them seen their, their, their children come back to church. And, and their children are now saved and walking with God. Why? Because they showed them love and they didn't judge them. Jesus was present. He, he did not judge this lady in any shape and form. He, he asked her for water. He got to know her. And then at the right moment... He started to evangelize to her. He started to explain who he was. He revealed who he was. And that's something I believe that we need to learn, is, is that we need to learn that sometimes it's not about just going, knocking the door and saying, you must be born again. Yours are all sinners, this, that, and everything else. The, we need to show the love of Jesus. It says, it says um, in the Great Commission to, to go and, and show... What, what, what God has taught. We know that from reading our Bibles. We know that from learning how Jesus um, discipled the disciples. And I just want to, to encourage you that we need to show Jesus and the way that he lives and lived, lives within us and lived to this world. The world needs to see people who show Jesus 100% of the time. We can't keep letting them see us being angry and being this way and that way and all over the place because that confuses people. They don't know who Jesus is. We need to show Jesus in a solid, consistent way. Our job is to be present for people, our family, our friends, our neighbors. We need to show them um, Jesus in all that we do. The third thing, <laughs> is, is that Jesus had a purpose. 
He had a plan. So whenever he went, and I've already explained that some of it was to show the disciples, to teach the disciples, and when the disciples came back, they were horrified. The dis- I love the disciples. I don't know about you, but I love the disciples. The disciples gives every, that give us all hope. They really do, honestly, honestly. Um, Three years walking with Jesus, three years learning from Jesus, three years sitting in the presence of Jesus, watching him and spending time with him. And in the, 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 the latter days of Jesus, after he was resurrected and before he ascended to heaven, in those moments... I just sit and scratch my head, and I go, seriously, what did you learn? The amount of times that they doubted Jesus, the amount of times that they did or said things, and it, I, I just can imagine in this moment when they, when they came back, the whispering and the, the comments, and no way, you know, why is he, why is he doing that? Scared to question it, scared to say these, these things. Jesus had a purpose because he needed to show them, but he also had a purpose and a plan because he knew that as he revealed himself to this lady, that he he was able to change her life forever. And when Jesus comes into any situation, we know it, he completely transforms it. He completely transforms it. So, when we go to see our friends and our family, when we go out of this place and we start to evangelize, because that's what we're all going to do, I know we are after this, um, there's abs- everybody's in trouble now, all our family members are in big trouble. Um, the bottom line is, is that when we go, we need to have a plan. And there's nothing wrong with being strategic about how we do things. And sometimes um, it can be Inviting them to the Alpha course. Sometimes it can be inviting them to something special in church. We've got a wonderful time of the year um, coming up very soon, and there's, there's opportunities galore for us to bring our friends and our family to, to, to church and to, um, at Christmas time. But also, strategy can be through preparation and everything else. And I want to encourage you, and I know I've said this before, and, I, and I've said it a few times, I will keep banging this drum. I am not going to stop banging this drum. Friends, get out on Tuesday nights to the prayer meeting. We are seeing something amazing happening on Tuesday nights. Anybody that goes there will tell you there is such an excitement and a presence of God. But you know, the only thing we're praying for, which is not like a small thing, we're praying for our town. We're praying for people to get saved. And we are seeing people get saved. And, and, and I don't want anybody to miss that. On a Tuesday night, I, I want to set hold my hands up. I wasn't there on Tuesday night. And I'll tell you something now, honestly. Esther and I were going out for a night. We were looking forward to it. And we were driving to, to where we were going. And Esther says to me, are you okay? And I says, yes, I am, I am. But my spirit doesn't want to be where we're going. My spirit wants to be in the prayer meeting. And Esther knows that's not me. Honestly, it's not me. And, and it's only, I'm, I'm being honest, I'm being honest. Up until we came back from Cambodia, I, I mean, I, I know the importance of prayer very much so. And, and I, and, but in Cambodia, we would pray on the go and it was sort of like we would pray on the go. If we were going to plant a church, we would pray on the go. I am absolutely loving praying as a community and I just don't want anybody to miss out on it and we're meeting up in the room up at the back in in studio number three I want us that we have to come in here on a Wednesday and clear up um after Vicky sorry about this clear away the clear away everything and put out the seats here because we can't cope with the numbers in studio three and that we see the fire of God in here, not only in here, but in our hearts, so that when we leave here, nobody can deny that we know Jesus and that we're with Jesus. So we need to be strategic. We need to, we need to put the work. And if we want to see our family and friends saved, we need 
to step out and, and take action. I just want to say how the story ended. The story ended really, really exciting for me because, um, first of all, we've seen the first female evangelist. Now, here's the thing, and a lot of us have experienced this. Most of us have experienced this. When this so this, this, this lady hadn't been judged. She had realized who Jesus was, and she... She left and she went into her community. Now, she was, she was shunned massively by her community. So for her to go in and speak to the men of the city, that was just like unthinkable. But because when we're first saved, we have this hunger. We have this desire to see other people saved. Do you know what we tell people in Cambodia? Now, we don't tell lies. Okay, we don't. We just slightly twist it slightly, but, but, but we don't tell lies, okay? <laughs> when people get saved in Cambodia, we tell them that the expectation is, is that they will lead somebody to Jesus in the next two weeks. In the next two weeks. So people in the villages are getting saved and they're thinking, right, okay, I need to read my Bible, I need to pray, I need to do this, I need to do that, and I need to lead somebody to Jesus in two weeks. I'll tell you honestly, I'm not even joking. You want to see how that works at times? People are thinking, oh, you, it's an expectation. And they expect that, that not only will they lead somebody, but the person that they lead will go and lead somebody as well. Wow, imagine, imagine if that was the way we all felt. But in those moments, you know, we would tell anybody about Jesus in those first few moments. So where has that gone? Where has that passion in our hearts where's the how has it been um calmed down or whatever put how's that been put out where, where is our desire to win those for jesus i want to share one one statistic with you now this is, might sound really crazy and i love numbers my brain works with numbers not with words so that's why I make up words and I don't spell words right. So, um, but this is, this is a number I want you to think about, okay? If, and this is not a big, this is not a big challenge. If every single one of us in this room, so it, with, within the church, let's say we have 250 adults, okay? If every single one of us reached one person by the end of next year, we would have... 500 people, 500 adults that would know Jesus and part of our community here at Lakeside. If we were to do the same the following year and all 500 of us did it again, we'd have 1,000 by the end of 2021. What would that mean for you? You, you will have led two people to Jesus in, in two years. Let's go a bit further. A thousand reach one by the end of 2022. All of a sudden, we've got 2,000 people. Now, that means we've now got nine services on a Sunday. <laughs> but those are the headaches you don't need to worry about because that's the headaches that God looks after. Um, 2,000 reach by the end of 2023 is 4,000. And we could go on and we could go on and go on. But what do you see this for statistic? If each of us reach one person each year for the next seven years, and we told everybody that they also had to reach one, here's how many people by the year 2028 that would be saved in Southport. 128,000. Now, here's the problem. There's only 100,000 in Southport. <laughs> So we'd have to go to Ormskirk or we'd have to go to somewhere else as well. But you know what, guys? Seriously, these things only will happen if we start, start getting out of our seats and going to our friends and our families and telling them again about Jesus or showing them Jesus. Some will be ready to hear. Some will be ready to see. But we need to do it in a strategic way that, that wins Jesus um, wins the, this, this town for Jesus. Friends, I dare you to go. I want to finish. I want to finish, and I want to just speak for a minute to, um, to those who are here that aren't saved. 
Um, if you're here and you don't know Jesus um, already, we hear in this story that Jesus um, made himself present. He was sitting at the well. Well, do you know what? And I'm, I want to encourage you this morning. Jesus is here. The Holy Spirit is in this room. And he has that living water available for you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus is st standing here with his arms open wide. He has his arms and his, his hands have those scars in them from when he hung on the cross and took your punishment for the sins that you've committed. And this morning, all you have to do is reach out to him. All you have to do is give him your life. And he will come in and he will transform your life. He will change your life forever. He will make such a difference to every area of your life because he is a God that loves you, loves you so much. Even though you don't know him, he still wanted to die in your place. And I want to encourage you this morning. I'm actually going to give you an opportunity now to respond. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you just inside yourself say, repeat these words and at the end say amen, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond this morning to change your life forever. You might be sitting and you might be saying to yourself, well, I would love to become a Christian, but do you know what? I struggle with this area of my life. I can't come as I am. I've got too many things wrong. Jesus is saying to you this morning, come as you are. Come as you are and we'll work those things out together. And he will. He will. So I'm just going to pray. If you just close your eyes and, and, and friends, if you're already saved, this is the time to start praying for those that aren't. Praying that God speaks into their hearts. And I just, if we just all close our eyes and we're, we're just going to take a moment. Just say, say these words into yourself after me. Lord, I just, I just thank you today that you're here and you're available and willing to forgive me for my sins. I'm sorry for the things that I've done. I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made. And today, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you, Lord. I, I'm giving my life to you. Forgive me for everything that I've done wrong. Lord, just help me in the days that lie ahead. Help me, help me know what is right and what is wrong. Lord, today I just give my life to you. In your name we pray. Amen. I just ask you to stay in a, a, with your eyes closed for a minute. And I just want to say to you, I just want to say to you, if you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Jesus and you've prayed those words or you're, or, or you're agreeing with those words, I just ask you very simply to do something really bold and really brave. Just to slip your hand up. In a, in a moment, I'll tell you to do it. Just slip your hand up and let me see it. It's only so that we can help you in the days that lie ahead. So if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, thank you. Um, if you've never given your life to Jesus before and you want to, to make that commitment, you want to make that change in your life, a life-changing moment, please just slip your hand up right now. And then, um, as I see it, you, you can put it back down again. So, so thank you. Um, not going to prolong this, but if there's anybody else that, that wants to, to step onto a new journey and the new, new way of life. I just want to encourage you to do that now. Okay, okay. Lord, I just thank you for this person this morning. I just pray, Lord, you just really encourage them and bless them. I pray, Lord, that you help them, Lord, as they step out and, and move into a whole new life, Lord. I pray for those that are here, Lord, that, have, that know that they, need to, to, that they need you in their life, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that, that you just keep working in their lives and revealing yourself to them, Lord. I pray, Lord, that if, if anyone needs to speak afterwards, Lord, that they'll feel comfortable to come and speak to us, Lord. Just pray this in your wonderful, glorious name.
If there's anyone here and you, and you haven't put your hand up, look, putting your hands up is just an indication. It's not, it, 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 you can still give your life to Jesus without putting your hand up. Come and talk to us. Don't leave here without making the most important decision you'll ever make in your life, and it will change your life forever. And friends, just as we are about to praise and worship God again before we go, I just want to encourage you, please don't just let these words today, the, 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 this challenge be something that goes into your, your heart and sits and you do nothing about it. Movements are things that start happening and they keep going. And we, we, I believe we're, we've just stepped and are starting to, to, to see a real movement, a real move of God in our church and in our community that's, that's, that's going to be absolutely phenomenal. So let's, as a church, everyone take the responsibility for those that Jesus hung on the cross for in their families. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Stand with us. Yeah.
Father, may that be true what we've just been singing, that for endless days we will sing your praise. Lord, you're, you're so good to us. You continue to pour your kindness and your grace upon our lives. Father, help us be people who will go and show the same and be the same and do the same to all those around us, we pray. Lord, part us from here with your peace and with your blessing and with that courage, Lord, to go into the world and reach people with your amazing love. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great afternoon. God bless you.